Bears have made another signing ahead of training camp, signing Avante Collins. Me and Steve are going to break it all down, talk about what it could mean. Does it have any big-time implications for the Chicago Bears offensive line? I doubt it, but we'll talk about it right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Steve-O. Uh, so, uh, Avante Collins Got signed by the Chicago Bears. Uh, this guy, I did some research on him, 6'4", 307 pounds. He actually holds the record of the fastest 40-yard dash time of an offensive lineman ever. Uh, for a 4'8", 40-yard dash. That's crazy. That's that's wild, bro. How do you feel about yeah. uh, uh, when, when you see this signing? He was initially uh, signed in 2017. He went undrafted in that draft. Hasn't really played a lot too much. That's why... I don't necessarily think this is like a, a signing that may indicate a lot for the Bears, but they do get a versatile offensive lineman that they could use. What do you think about it? Um, I instantly liked it, honestly, because one of the things I was kind of worried about, it was like, well, the depth is not how I want it to be in a couple areas. One of those areas is O-line. Yeah, we improved, but especially on that left side, it's not that much depth there. Now that we can move uh, uh, Cody to the center, um, move Tevin to the left. So now that he he's more from the majority of his career, he had, I believe his longest stint was in Minnesota. He pretty much played that left tackle, left guard. And um, that's something I want is more depth on that side. And that's something he, he's been doing majority of his career. He's 30 years old. But I don't, I don't want the 30-year-old to scare anybody because, like I said, I don't think he, he hasn't played that much. Um, like the main, I think his main, my main concern about him is what everybody concerned was about him was his strength. Sometimes, like he could, he could beat you to the punch. He got a strong punch, and then once people start turning their tires, then he could get pushed back into their quarterback face. And I think that's one of his main issues. But he's a he's a legit backup, and that's one thing I wanted. So I'm not, I I like it because we definitely need more um depth on that side. We definitely need depth on the offensive line. And, you know, we'll see if he ends up getting out, out of training camp, if he ends up making the, the final 53-man roster. I think probably more than likely he's probably going to end up being on the practice squad. But when you look at the depth, let's turn this into a conversation about the depth on the offensive line. One of the players that, you know, the Bears initially brought in for some promise, and he didn't really play too much. I don't think feel like it's fair to give a complete evaluation yet because he wasn't fully healthy. What do you think this could mean for, like, a player like Alex Leatherwood who was looked at to bring some depth to that offensive line? Um, To be, to be honest, to me, it shouldn't affect Alex that much because I feel like Alex is pretty – he's pretty much more solid on that right side. Yeah. Um. And that's what we can use him at. Um, but one thing it will bring is competition. So I, I'm never, I'm never somebody that doesn't want competition for the most part. So, so I, I want to if if Alex is good enough and he's willing to beat him out, go ahead because you you work for it. So if it's it's competition there, I'm I'm cool with it. But um, when it comes to Alex, like I said, he played left tackle in college, but um, and they and I think. It's, it was a detriment to him being on that right side because I believe they put him at right guard in Vegas, and he just didn't do well at all. And I'm like, he's a natural-born tackle, so if you're going to put him on the right side, he better be a right tackle, which I think yeah. we probably going to use him as. And like I said, I think our main focus was going to use him at that tackle position, either on the left or right side. So hey, it's competition. And, um, but I feel like maybe Alex probably got the, the edge over him, like I said. um. He Collins is thirty, and um, Leatherwood was a top pick coming out as a left tackle, so um, he still has the potentials there, and um, I I still feel like Alex shouldn't be completely bothered by this move. Yeah, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, like like you said, competition. That's one thing that Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus have. They're, they're two off seasons so far with the Bears. You could tell that bringing in competition is an important part of them and their evaluation process during training camp, which is really what training camp is. Mm -hmm. Like for for most most players, right? You yeah, you have your projected starters and like that, but training camp really is an evaluation period for the roster in totality to kind of figure out what your rotation is going to be, find the best combinations of players, and to do that, you do need to bring in pieces that are going to help that competition, help compete in those areas and. You know, that's something Ryan Poles has done both his off season so far, and I would not be surprised at all to see it continue. Yeah, that's one, and that's one thing. It just one thing I, I'm just loving about uh, one um, Poles is he's true to his word. 
um, we've we've been through a lot of GMs that say one thing and they actually say another. One thing he's always said, I, I'm going to pay heavy attention to the um, O-line. The O-line was part of the one thing he hated when he came through here. He was like, it was not up to par. Uh, their mindset was not right. Um, they wasn't, they physically, they wasn't right. So I'm gonna get that together. And that's one thing he's been coming at. And you see, um, our draft pick, um, Darnell coming in, lost a ton of weight, which he said he was going to do. He wanted him to do it. He's done it. Cody has transformed his body as well. Tevin has transformed his body. Everybody pretty much on this online has lost weight and transformed their body to the scheme that he wants to run. And that's one thing, uh, Pose made sure he said, and he's keeping his word. And it, it just it's kind of strange to me because I'm just waiting for him to fuck up one time. <laughs> he he hasn't yet. He really hasn't. I know some people try to like reframe the Roquan deal. And that's why I've never done a video on like there was the Roquan Tris Smith uh Tris uh, Smith trade, right? Because it's to me like, yeah, I, we we nobody doubts the talent that Roquan is, but like you look we our whole linebacking core is pays gets paid one million dollars more than what Roquan got. That's a smart deal. He's not made a stupid deal yet. And if you could read so. between the lines of a lot of the interviews between Pose and the players, one of the things that keep coming up multiple times is we had a lot of people to, that have been on this team a while that wasn't about this team fully, that wasn't 100% in, that love football. And now that some people are gone, we know who. Now they're saying everybody <laughs> loves football now. Everybody's humming, everybody's flying all over the field. What was one of the last things we were saying about Rokon before he got traded? It don't look like, God damn. It don't look like he giving all his, um, his, his all. Yeah. His all. Like he wasn't playing his best. One thing we know, he was a tackling machine and he was out there, arm tackles, arm tackles, missing tackles here, guessing here, guessing the wrong gap. And we're running a 4 3, and you got to be a smart running back. You got to be a very smart running back. And one thing we always knew about Rokar coming out of Georgia is he's a physical specimen, and he's fast, and he's going to get tackles. But when it comes thinking, he it's, it's, it's something to be wanted there. It's just something he needs he needs to work on. Then you replace that with Tremaine Hebbins as somebody who has that physical aspect and thinks the game. You can't get mad at that. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan Post has done a really good job, made a lot of smart moves, and we continue laying that groundwork, and we'll see what else comes out of training camp. Uh, Steve, before, I know me and the guys talked about it, but before we go, do you expect the Bears to add a veteran edge before the start of the season, or do you think they're going to ride out with I what mean, I, I, I could see it happening, but I'm just, I'm kind of getting, not annoyed, but I just want people to realize that we're building this line from the inside out. We're not really focused on our edge doing majority of the rope because it's not a 3-4 defense. In a 3-4 defense, you need heavy edge work. We don't need that. We're trying to get the interior work so it'd be easier for the edge just to come around and clean up. Yeah, if we get a uh, – I don't think we're going to get any like you know, in Gonkway or nothing, but maybe a Justin Houston, some people of that aspect. I'm telling you right now, then if – we're not going no more than about five million a year. So all those big dudes you talking about uh, edges, we're not getting the ch the chases. We're not getting them. We're getting a like you said a vet that's probably gonna get a private minimum at this point. Yeah, and I and I think that's the the chance. The I think they're gonna go throughout most of training camp, maybe even the first couple of preseason games, and take a look at what they have because preseason, especially early on, is a lot about testing your depth, giving them a lot of snaps, seeing what you have in them. And then Pose made it look to do something, but unless – I've always said that I don't see them doing something at the edge unless we get close to the trade deadline and we're mm -hmm. just not – still not getting to the yeah, quarterback. It, at that point, he may make a Yeah, because it still seems like they got – they keep saying that um, Robinson and Gibson is coming along. And I feel like they still – that's one that – I believe they – Pose necessarily didn't draft them, but I think he drafted Robinson, if I'm not mistaken. He drafted Robinson. Yeah, so yeah, I'm pretty – Robinson is one of his his guys, so he's going to ride it to as long as he can. He's seen – he's he's a legit pro, uh, project, so he's trying to see that he can work his way and turn him into something. And he's done for this – he's done a little something for something for nothing, and he never played the end like that. So um, yeah, sure. I, and Travis, we've seen flashes with both. So I, I think when he sees flashes with both, especially guys he picked – He's going to work with it. That's a fact.
That's a fact. And we'll see how that ends up turning out. But, man, that's it for this real quick update video. Just wanted to get the news out about the uh, Bears and Avante Collins. Uh, but you know, make sure y'all go follow Steve-O at Steve-O Speaks on everything because that's where he is on everything. Uh, you guys can also follow the channel at Shy Bears Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, Chicago Bears Central, gmail.com. And lastly, we'll going to leave a text message and our voicemail, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago. Chicago Bears lady. We'll be back. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break Media.